as promised then, as I said, as I turned up things uh, about TA optimized radial lights when using boost light, that uh, I would continue to make videos. So, what I was experimenting with, now if I go to the create library here, I want uh, this object here, this ring, which is made through a Boolean operation on the uh, on the torus with a cylinder which just creates a, a sort of straightforward ring shape um, the reason it's not landed on the ground properly is because the cylinder interferes with the landing operation so if I set it down on the ground and what I was wondering about um, as you can see it's just a default uh, Bryce lighting at the moment was uh, whether or not it was possible to get a caustic effect out of the TA lighting system. Now, I've tried this before but there's always been a problem that the amount of light you're generating um, crushes the effect that, y that you can see. Well, I'll try and set that up and you can see how it works. So I'll turn the atmosphere off, make the sky fully black and I'm going to turn the sun off there. I'm going to create a, a radial light, just a standard radial light here, modify it, give it true ambience optimization and then uh, move it down to one side so I'm looking at this we're still in ordinary mode here um, the in inner surface of this generating the caustic effect now I'm going to need reflection to achieve that so I'll go into the ring into the materials I'm not going to need ambience I'll turn the diffuse up turn the ambience off and give it some reflection there we go so now we've got reflective surface we're still not getting any caustic effect obviously so I'm going to switch the render mode now render options premium effects low raise per pixel to preview it true ambience TA scatter correction boost light and I'm going to lower the ray depth to 4 to allow it to be render a bit more efficiently so now I don't know if it's going to show up on this but there is actually a bit of a caustic reflection going on across that edge what I found now with the radial light and this is a tier a optimized light we just go straight into the material for this uh, this is a default state with using light if I lower the transparency that actually increases the brightness of the light a bit you can see we're having the the noise issue and I thought hmm well that's interesting um, I wonder what happens without using a gel if we just go in and modify the material for it if this could be used. Now from my own knowledge of materials I know that if you make something transparent and 100% reflective you get this situation where the light gets trapped inside the object and things get brighter and brighter. If we include ambience in this mix as well and then make sure that the global ambience is turned right up we could end up with a lot of light. So now we've got lots of light being employed and maybe you can see this little bit of a caustic effect here. Obviously the situation is not ideal with the low um, raise per pixel we're using. So I'll alter the document setup. I'll reduce this down a bit to a smaller size and uh, I'll narrow the field of view so I can get a closer look at what's what's going on in this situation. Now one thing I'm noticing is that the the reflected light off this is not really uh, re reflecting, if you like, the colour. So I need to use metallicy, and then the colour that it was set to, which is sort of coppery colour, will be incorporated into the light. And I think you can see a little bit of that now. But again, the whole setup is being suppressed by the uh, by the light that's arriving and landing on the on the ground. Well, in the radial lights we discovered the true air ambience optimized lights still uh, respond to exclusion so if I exclude the ground plane that means the ground plane is not going to see the first load of light that arrives so now uh, it's difficult to tell that that's reduced the effect on the ground I'm probably going to have to turn the um, raise per pixel up a bit to see if we can get a better guide as to what's going off because things are too noisy otherwise so with more sampling we're getting um, a more definition of, of what's taking place so I'll turn this up again the obviously it's going to start interfering with what we're doing now but you can perhaps see a bit clearer now the effect that's going on in here 
and um, what I'm going to do is, is I'll go back and I'll, I'll uh, undo this exclusion you might see more clearly this time the difference in lighting well, it wasn't that marked so the light's got to be arriving from other places so the ring is obviously going to respond well to the light source so we could lower the diffuse response of the ring and that might stop some light scattering back into the environment now this top edge of the ring looks very dark because there's no there's no sky I've turned the atmosphere off and it's and it's black and uh, the lights looking a little bit intense so we'll go back in here I'll continue to fiddle with this I'll exclude the plane again and I'll reduce the intensity of the light preview is not very helpful at this point and now perhaps we're starting to see there's a little bit of more of this effect visible in this uh, situation I just let that render a bit there to get more of an impression of what's going on. So you've got these very high bright spots which are a problem with the boost light mode and it's difficult to get around that in this situation. I suppose I could include another light source, wrap the entire scene in it, edit this one. I'm undecided about whether to exclude the plane. I like the theory of it but it doesn't seem to be making that much difference to the render. Anyway, with this light source what we're going to do is, I'll, I'll do it this way, use gel procedural and uh, we'll just provide ambience from this one because it's wrapped around the object I use the include background because it's wrapped around the object then that's going to provide a general light that will be lower in noise so now I've got uh, two trambience light sources working in this scene and um, I'm hoping that I can now make this other light source a bit smaller that'll focus the effect a bit more inside here and we can see more of a definite effect coming from that and then if I increase the intensity of this let's have a look then we're getting more of a response but like I say the the light falling on the ground is still quite strong but I need the diffuse response of the ground to work with that effect now imagine that if I turn the ground plane to fully white it's going to be bit too extreme even with it excluding the ground plane I'll just try and turn the light down again I'll turn it back down to 10 I'm excluding the ground plane at the moment and we know that does work with this effect to some degree so now it looks almost as if the, the ground is glowing and and I'll just see whether or not you can see it changes the preview but it doesn't really change the affecting this render very much I don't think so we've got the, the general light and uh, that's coming from this radial light in the background and then the that's not it's not diffuse it's not mattering to that because I've used the exclude and it's only due, due to the ambient channel there and I could change I could change the ambient colour at this point and you would be able to see that that is having quite a strong influence on the overall appearance of the the scene. I think I'll set that down to a grey so it's allowing it to be a little bit dark here we've got some shadow modelling from that in that region and uh, this caustic effect this ring looks a bit coppery to me so I'm going to change I've not got anything in the ambient channel there that's okay I'm going to change this diffuse a little bit more to, to a, a gold colour I think render that looks more like a gold ring now and the other thing is that with the sky being very dark I could probably use uh, HDR I'll use one of Horrows this trap and hole too I'll only use a low resolution one because it's being used as a reflection turn the quality down I don't need it as a light source there uh, and uh, obviously using that with boost light could then introduce even more noise into the system particularly when I remember to add it to the sky, that is the black sky, so it'll then be part of this reflection. You see these blue dots appearing in this, that's as a result of uh, using that HDRI backdrop, even just using it to reflect on the object. So I'll change this outer radial light now uh, to one that's just going to stop any, any of the noisy true ambience light arriving from the HDRI. And we're back to being very dark now so this ambient control is only on the main light 
and uh, well it, we can see it's sort of getting the effect in there what I'm going to have to do now is uh, not turn depth of field on that was a thought is turn the raise per pixel up and give this a render see what the render time is going to be like and see whether it looks anything like I hoped it would so five minutes from now we'll find out well while I was um, waiting for this to finish and I was editing the video and listening to the commentary and putting in additional comments um, I sort of picked up on a few things and it made me think about what's going on here so what I thought I would try go back to this radial light and this one is going to exclude the ground plane but it's not excluding it at the moment and we're not as I said I weren't seeing much difference in this effect so if I go into the materials and I'll get rid of the ambient, the diffuse a transparent and a reflection it shouldn't do anything and, and we can test this so that's completely mitigated the effect if we go back into the material and just give it diffuse then if if it, if the ground the object can see the transient light source then if it it was only seeing it directly which means the exclusion should work 100% but we're not seeing anything but that might be because we've not provided it with enough diffuse output for this so if I give it enough diffuse output now the effect being generated by the reflection from the inside of this ring is very strong but there's so much light arriving from the diffuse channel it's it's squashing it so if I go back in here and now I exclude this because it's only light that's arriving directly from the light source surface I should be able to exclude it entirely and just leave the effect so now I've got a very strong effect occurring here and I can get away with reducing the size of the light source which will intensify the sharpness of the effect down to whatever level I want so probably gone a bit too sharp there because it's been really thin I'll go back a bit uh, that's got quite intense so um, the, it's a bit too uh, dark around here now so I need a, a light that's going to provide some general lighting and I could provide that in, in, the, in the way that I have been doing a bit of ambient light so if I take the outermost radial light and copy and paste that and then edit that as a gel light and it can give ambient from the ambient channel we just check we've got some ambient channel in the sky so that's provided general light so you can see there's a bit of shadow modeling there but that is a bit strong and it's only driving the ambient so I can control the color through the global ambient without having to keep going back in and out so I could reduce that and the other thing I need is a bit of uh, direct light to explain this strong noisy caustic effect that I've now generated so if I go for my other light source here this is the the innermost one radial one which is producing the effect and copy and paste that I could convert that into um, a sphere and convert it into an ordinary light source and we'll see whether that's yes it's disabled the trambient optimization effect but that doesn't really matter it should just be an ordinary light source now albeit a very bright one so uh, if I reduce the effect of that now so I've got something that's explaining this shadow I've got a shadow from that and I can and I can use the soft shadows here it doesn't matter if I use soft shadows because the um, I'm already using premium effects so I just switch soft shadows on the other thing to consider is that might still be excluding the ground plane no it isn't so it's not remembered that so that's okay uh, that's why I was just swapped it for a sphere and a light source to try and disengage it from as many effects as possible. So I think I'm going to increase the intensity of that light source to explain this intense um, caustic effect in there and reduce the global ambience intensity to just provide just providing a bit of general light. So the, the caustic effect's looking a little bit strong and it's still got this problem with the the noise if I increase this light source still further so I've just got to try and get a balance so that it, it looks sort of plausible perhaps if I chose a material for the ground plane 
I know I'll, I'll use one of the ones I created for this uh, metals where are we this scratched metal that's quite a dark material anyway and oh it's on will space I think I'll need it on I'll put it on parametric see how that looks on this surface I think I have to swap the bump height round as well because I'm applying it for some reason when you world space and world space mapping a parametric it ch changes over so I've darkened the ground a bit but I've still got my caustic effect in there and I'm going to modify the ring material while I'm at it so we've got diffusion of 10 there and fully reflective I could pick one of these ones out with a specular component as well just to make it a little bit more interesting drop the diffusion down to tell and I'll give it full reflection as well so I should have enough to drive the effect so just an upgrade on the materials it shouldn't make that much difference but since you can see now it's going to take 26 minutes to render out like this we'll go to the trouble of uh, producing a high quality render I might as well do it with the, the best materials to my advantage so I'll just switch the two uh, oh this was going to be a 10 minute experiment one it's going to turn up to a 15 minute experiment at this rate oops so I'll just turn this so I can see how how uh, the bumps responding because uh, I think I'm going to have to increase the frequency of this material a little bit because I'm so close in on the surface otherwise the, because it's texture driven not procedural driven I want to see these I want it to look like fine scratches on the surface that's at a plausible scale to the to the ring so it's giving you some sort of impression of size these specs are obviously the boost light effect that's coming off the inside aha now there's a problem now, caustic effect is getting somewhat scattered by the the bumpiness of the material I hadn't quite anticipated that but oh well we'll we'll see how it turns out that's the only way it might be the bump in this material, it could just be the noisiness of the boost light effect. I suppose the only other thing I could do is increase the document size significantly when it renders. Um, that might take a bit longer to render, well four times as long since I've increased the the length and breadth twice. But uh, at a later stage then I might have a chance of filtering out uh, the, the noise. So we'll see how this turns out now. So render time on that 1 hour 17. Oh, I suppose that's reasonable. I'll just pause the video. So in the end it took about as long as it suggested it was going to take. Just over an hour and 15 minutes. Um, longer because I had to go back and change the uh, the amplitude on the bump channel again. Because I'd mistakenly uh, got it inside out so these scratches were actually raised ridges. And it's, not, uh, it's not entirely perfect I know. But uh, it, it sort of got the effect I was looking for. There's these bright spots here and here and here on this edge and here obviously evidence of uh, the the problem you get with the boost light and the, the noise and there's some noise along this edge and there's the noise in this so possibly the only solution then to get on top of that because I can't select any higher rays per pixel is as I suggested I go into Paint Shop Pro and I'll resize the image back down to 700 by 394 which was my original size and use weighted average and, and that will to some extent suppress the noise you can still see there's a hint of it on this on this edge and a bit in there but it is better than it was so I would say that's it then um, caustic effect sort of using trambience um, mode in in Bryce 7.1 Pro um, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's it's a method. I mean, what you've seen is my experimenting with producing this effect. Uh, obviously, I'll, I'll see if I can find a more efficient way of doing it and then provide a proper tutorial, but that's as far as I've got with these experiments.